Hey guys, Lord Nitrum here, and today I'm going to be talking about how to use the AT Launcher, or the AT Launcher, or the ATL, however you want to refer to it. The AT Launcher is essentially kind of like the Feed the Beast Launcher, or even the Technic Launcher. It's used for installing and launching large mod packs to run on Minecraft. And the first thing you want to know about this is the fact that much like Feed the Beast, it's going to need its own directory. So when you download the, the jar or the exe, put it in its own folder because the first time you run it, it's going to create all these other folders and start populating them with whatever it needs. And from there, you can create a shortcut onto your desktop or into the start menu, wherever you want to put it. Uh, for me, I'll probably create another quick launch bar up here or something to make it blend in better with my very pristine desktop that I work hard to keep organized. I decided to make this video because a few days ago my friend Tim launched a server running Resident Rise 3, and we're all switching over to that from Feed the Beast because the server we normally play on there is kind of under some work. So in the meantime, we're I'm going to be playing Resident Rise 3, and I'll probably release some Let's Plays of that or something of that nature. And I decided to do this video because most of our friends are jumping over to play on our server with us, of course. And it's easier to kind of demonstrate how this works compared to Feed the Beast rather than have to type everything in Steam Chat or talk about it on TeamSpeak. So hopefully this is helpful to you guys and any other viewers that decide to come through here. So once you launch it, it's going to take a while to load up. Uh, and it's going to take longer than mine has just now because it'll have to make all the other folders and so on and so forth the first time you launch. Every time you launch, it's going to bring you to the new screen first. And as you can see, it's got tabs similar to Feed the Beast. And the one tab I wish was still here compared to Feed the Beast is the texture tab. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no texture packs uh, to pre or auto install for you. Anyways, once you get in here, you can go into settings, you can mess with the uh, maximum RAM usage and everything, which is always good when you're using large packs like this. You want at least two or three gigs of RAM to use. And then you want to come over to accounts. And much like the other launchers, you have to tie in your account here and you can remember the password or enter it every single time. But once that's done, it lets you use your accounts down here at the bottom. After you have your account added, you can come over to the packs, and this is where all the fun is. Much like Feed the Beast or Technic, there's all these fun packs you can download and play. Where it differs, however, is you don't launch directly from here. What you do is you create a new instance, and you can name that instance whatever you want. You can run the various different versions available for download, and then just install that. It'll download everything to the downloads folder and once that's done you can play it. So you could even name it AT Tutorial if you wanted. And then install it. It'll download everything for you. So before it starts downloading right away this is another part where it differs in the fact that it's going to have all the required mods over here, and then everything else is going to be over here. And most servers for Resident Rise 3 use the mainline optional mods, which will pre-select everything for you. There's also light for if your computer can't handle mainline, and uh, for the previous version, which we're still running on our server, there was an option for excessive, which adds a lot of mods and is for really beefy computers as it as it likes to say. Uh, for my friends watching, we're not using the most current, we're using version 3.2.3.2. Uh, once you select that, you can select mainline, and there's all these additional mods you can select and add on, which is nice if servers want to run, you know, say a mainline, but with a few additional things, which is what we decided to do. And there's even some client-side mods you can add, such as Voxel Map or Thumbcraft NEI plugin, which is helpful. So, for my friends watching, real quick, just come down to EX and add both the EX mods, and then the other third optional mod we have is 
back up here, Project E. And Project E is essentially, for anyone who's ever played the really old uh, Technic pack before it got deemed Technic Light and they made a new mainline Technic pack, uh, Project E is kind of just equivalent exchange 3, but it's been kept up to date. Nothing has been added, it's just been kept up to date to have EMC values for other mods, although for some reason it seems to be missing EMC values for all of Thermal Expansion. So once that's done and you have those selected, you can go ahead and install. I don't think anybody wants to watch me download mod packs right now, so instead of installing, I'm going to cancel this. But once you install, it lists all your instances over here. So here's the one that we would have just made, which is the AT tutorial. As I said, um, I meant to select at the beginning for 3232, but it'll tell you what the version is, what you decide to name that instance if you want to get in particular with uh, remember, you know, naming it something so that it kind of reminds you, oh, this one is, has these mod packs, but the other one has these mod packs. Uh, at, at that point, you can also edit the mods as well, view the mods you have, add new ones, which is useful if you want to play around with adding new mods to your version or if a server decides to update like let's say if um if Wraithlet, my buddy Tim decides he wants to enable intercontinental ballistic missiles mod on the server so that we can blow each other up from afar. You know that's great. He's just gotta let me know. We come into edit mods, we check off ICBM and it'll update and you just click play. You can also reinstall if there's any issues you're having, update if uh, you wanted to update to the newest version from 323 to something else, um, or you can just, you know, click play. And once you do that, just for anyone who's never used large mod packs before, for example, this one will have 212 mods, or actually I believe it's 221 mods selected. It's going to take a while to load up. It'll take a good minute or two maybe even three or more if your computer you know, isn't loading it up fast enough. So when it launches Minecraft, it might say that it's unresponsive for a little bit, but it'll move past that. It'll give you you know, the Mojang uh, uh, icon loading screen. And one nice thing about this mod pack compared to others is at the bottom, it'll have a, a red bar that moves across as it's loading and initializing all the mods. So you can kind of watch the progress and know that's moving. And of course, near the end, once it gets around 99% loaded, it's going to be unresponsive for a few seconds before it brings you into the main screen. So you can select multiplayer or single player. I don't want to load it up now because as I said, it takes a little while. It takes about two minutes. And I mean, you pretty much know what to do at that point. Once you click play and it loads up, just go play solo or go play with some friends. I mean, that's it. So. Hopefully this was helpful for my friends and informative for anybody else out there who came across this. And, you know, if you enjoyed it, go ahead and maybe hit that subscribe button or give it a thumbs up. Appreciate it. Take care.